like, oh, we'll book a flight here and like for tomorrow. Yeah. Or, you know, you guys, like it's very crazy. Be. My yeah. brothers still find it like insane. Absolutely insane that I won't buy a flight until like a couple weeks before. Yeah. Because we grew up, I had been on a plane maybe twice before I was 24. Really? Okay. And Got you. now I just kind of buy, it's just like I'll buy a flight the day before I leave. And yeah. that sort of seems to be the best way to do it a lot of times. You know, yeah. Like, though my older brother bought his flights to come out here for the Manhattan Open already. Really? Like you are. He's prepared. <laughs> that's in August. <laughs> yeah. Regular work schedules and stuff. Yeah. Crazy. It's really a matter of just the price at this point. Yeah. Like, sometimes I really screw myself. <laughs> <laughs> I good thing you just... got some good sponsorship. <laughs> that's true. I am lucky in that way but i literally will just wait until kane books his flight <laughs> okay so i don't have so to do the, the work boss and then well you're... that way i don't have to do the work of finding the flight yeah and figuring out oh, when should we be there and, yeah which you know i'm kind of luggage in that way yeah I'll admit. No, for sure shauna <laughs> no, is for sure. the admin lady in our dynamic yeah. absolutely everyone needs a team mom yeah and Cam is my team i mom. love that every partnership <laughs> has like a director of ops yeah. Like you're the director of ops. You're the person who does the social media. You're team right. mom. You do I this. I definitely carry social media. Yeah. Hmm. See, I bring I the chat. That's it. The chat. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, that's why we had you on the pod. Yeah. Okay. We heard you, you bring a solid pod or a pod chat. It's so funny, though, because I feel like extroverted. But then when I think about like sitting here in front, you know, like it's yeah. just like. Don't be weird. But <laughs> it's the same cast. It's the same thing. It's so funny that like so many people know about the po- the show now, and we literally just like started it. Yeah. Out of nothing, it was just really? super random. Let's just talk with people and see what happens. So whose idea like, was Whoa, it? Whoa, I'm on the podcast. Tries. Okay. Yeah, my idea. Cool. Out of. Before coming boredom. on, I did my homework on oh, you there guys we go. and oh, listened yeah? to some. Yeah, yeah. Who'd so. you listen to? I kind of bounce between Zana's and then I listen to uh, Taryn and Kristen's and then uh-huh. like you guys one. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was good. Good stuff. Zana's fun. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Zana? Like, you uh, met yeah, like, I mean, I, you know, we're friends and yeah. we would see each other on tournaments and stuff, but like we haven't really spent a lot of like time outside of volleyball mm. together. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like that's just... Now that this is my third year on the tour, I feel like I know of everyone mm-hmm. and like have some really close friends and then, yeah, friendly, friendly with everyone. It's yeah. interesting, yeah. like, you hear Zana's name come up first because we're like, everyone loves Zana. Like, yeah. Her, her episodes are always the most downloaded. Really? Yeah. She's number Girl one got all great time. chat. She's carrying number one us. all time. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty carrying good. Us. I know. Yeah. I mean, she does like. I mean, all of you guys on the AVP, it is pretty cool to see, like, the support you guys have and just, like, the crowd support. Yeah. It is insane. I know. A lot of times we, like, kind of complain, you know, because we always want the tour to be better and we're always trying to figure stuff out. But then we we talk to, like, people from other countries and we're like, oh, we have it way better than any other country dude yeah. i would love to play an avp like i feel like i'm gonna like start the green card process to, right like, yeah <laughs> i love that yeah. well could you start the green card process? Your, Apparently, that's all you gotta do up? so i don't really know how it works like probably not because yeah. i i did like three years almost three years at minnesota and then my last year at florida state right um but that did, was obviously that a covid count? year yeah, it counted because we it? played like three weekends of. I thought the COVID, tournament. everyone got like a COVID red shirt year though. Yeah, no. So I could get that if I wanted okay. to. Plus, I could, yeah, probably apply for a red shirt as well. But like at the time, I had graduated and I was like, I'm done with my degree and I was going to law school. And then it was just like, you know, like playing like pro was way more exciting to me than. Yeah like suffering through a COVID year, (laughs) you know, because it just was like so intense at the time. That makes sense. Yeah. Did you you get into football at all when you were in Minnesota? Yeah. I mean, sorry to all my Minnesota football friends, but I I feel like the program was still building at that time. What about the Vikings? The Vikings? That's why I was asking. That's my team. Oh, okay. I actually have family in Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. some roots there like i could follow what's happening in a football game but i feel like it's like my like college self that like slammed country music and like (laughs) wore the cowgirl boots and like i feel like there's a a part of me that's been like 
I don't know, like put away while right, I'm, like, right, yeah, when yeah, I went yeah. home. It's like still there, but it's there's doesn't a, come out. There's, I think everyone has a part of them that they leave in college. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Good, for me, good thank times. God. Amazing times. Yeah, thank yeah, God. Thank yeah. God mine died in College Park. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Everyone's a college football fan if, they're, if their team's good while mm. they're in college, right? Yeah. Well, when you get to Florida State, I mean, that's a oh, big yeah, program. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, Although that maybe was even cool. They, they might have even been down because they're kind of on the, the down slope yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still found it, like, really impressive. Like, probably, yeah, the ACC was a cool conference yeah. to, to be in. And... The vibe was definitely intense, like, on college football days. Um, basketball there was pretty good, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I feel like definitely, like, obviously with, like, the playoffs and stuff, I feel like a bandwagoner, majorly. Oh, totally. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. since, like, huge shout-out to Lisa Reed for having me stay with her, but she is, like, a massive Lakers fan. And so I feel like I've been watching a lot of Lakers stuff mm-hmm. at the moment. Right. So I feel like they're going to be my new team. Right. I'm yeah. I'm kind of in that boat right now, although I've been here for like however many years. Yeah, I'm always like I can't. I'm not gonna jump on the Lakers bandwagon, but I love the team that they put together this year. Yeah, so I'm cheering for them. Yeah, I got I got sucked into it because when I was playing with Avery Drost, he is like bleeding heart, die hard Lakers fan. Okay. And I never watched the like the NBA to me for will forever stand for not before April. I will <laughs> not watch the NBA before playoffs because I think it's just a terrible product. I mean, yeah. it's bad basketball. Oh, tell me how you really feel. But, yeah, jeez, yeah, that but, was aggressive. So I watch college. <laughs> watch the watch March Madness. I can't yeah, watch college March football. Madness. I'm I'm the same way, but about college. Okay, with college basketball. Uh, either. Okay. I just don't. I. Uh, it's just like. I, I want to watch pros. Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't we didn't have an NBA kids. team in Maryland. So right. it was Maryland basketball. And that right. Was right. Right. Um, but then me and Avery, Avery got me super into the Lakers because we watched the Lakers game when we were in New Orleans during the storm. Okay. And then now, and then one Lakers game, Austin fell asleep in my chest for an entire Lakers game. And I was like, not moving. Right. You can't, right, moving. You can't get hyped. <laughs> and then Austin yeah. Reeves starts going off. And then Austin off. Reeves starts going off. Now it's. Mm. Now, like, I got my son, Austin, Austin Reeves. Yeah. I'm a Lakers guy now. Bandwagon. There you go. I'm on board. We're all bandwagoning right now. <laughs> yeah, nice. I mean, yeah, like, what about college volleyball for you guys? Like, are you guys into it? Indoor or beach? Both. Like, because obviously I experience both and love both, but it mm-hmm. is crazy to me how there isn't a bigger guys, like, yeah. running from college through to, like, pro stuff. It's very small. Yeah. I grew up loving, like, like obsessed with, University of Hawaii volleyball mm. or and football or any of that. That was like our pro team and volleyball was like pretty much the reason that I like loved the sport was from going to those college those matches. Games. The women's probably more so than the men actually. Mm. The so, bows or yeah. The bow, nice. the rainbow warriors okay. and the rainbow wahine. Oh wahine. <laughs> nice. Uh so yeah, I've I've definitely had that bug. I don't follow it as much nowadays there's just too much to follow i barely follow our uh, i can keep track of our own <laughs> yeah. beach but uh travis keeps me pretty updated on the college sand yeah. side of things I'll, cool. I'll lightly follow the college sand i'll see who's good at the beginning of the year and sort of follow along and then once championship season starts up because usually lightly is i would say heavily but compared to me like, <laughs> yeah. or compared to anybody, like lightly for you, you know, like yeah. everyone's names and like how they're doing and yeah. everything. Lightly for me is pretty relevant, pretty relative because right, I'm exactly. a hyper nerd with right. sports and especially cool. volleyball. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so, so indoor, I definitely follow lightly. Did you see that uh, Nebraska is having a game in their football stadium? Really? And they sold 90,000 tickets. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen that, but I would believe it because, I mean, there's not 000. much else to do. In yeah. How much does, like, the watch. Staples Center or Crypto Center hold? I'm not sure. Usually, MB, like, it's like ba- 20. Basketball arenas are usually maxing out at 20. And they sold 90 for a volley- college volleyball game. Yeah. I mean, that was definitely the most intense, one of the most intense stadiums to play, at, or not, you know, like for the indoor stadium. That yeah, was yeah, pretty yeah. intense. Like, Oh yeah, yeah. wait. Are they in your conference? Big Ten. Big Ten. Big Ten. Yeah, 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 for sure. Right. Like Wisconsin or Nebraska was definitely diehard, but yeah, yeah. That that'll be cool for them. Um, but yeah, I just it's hope kinda, it doesn't rain. 
I got, yeah. I'm like, this is outdoors. such a cool event because yeah. there were only four programs in the country who sold more tickets in an entire season than Nebraska's selling in that one game. I love how you know Holy that. God. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a yeah. fun fact. Oh, I'm just a late yeah. fan. Yeah. <laughs> Not super invested. I read a lot. Nice. <laughs> nice. No, it's cool. Yeah, but, yeah, big, but Big Ten Indoor is big league volleyball. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a big learning curve. Like, coming from New Zealand, it's definitely, I was a big fish in a little pond and then walk it, you know, like arriving. And then I think I arrived at like 2 a.m. and it was so cold. I'd never been that cold before. <laughs> like didn't know my roommate. Like it was such a big adjustment, yeah. but it was fun. It was good. How do you get recruited from New Zealand to Minnesota? Honestly, I've always wondered how that works. Like I'll see LMU, their lineup is so many foreign, foreign checks. players. And yeah. then like, how does that happen? Um, I mean, so the growth has been really, really fast. I think when I was recruited, like I used an agent, her name is Jess, um, and she cut up all my film for me and sent it out to colleges. So that's how I got started with the process. But now, like, I don't even know. I, I guess it's just much of the same but also like more and more girls are playing international stuff earlier and like age group level stuff yeah. and so you get scouted or but it is hard coming in from an international point of view because uh like recruiting here happens so young yeah. and like obviously volleyball in New Zealand is not it's big but it's like not as big as like rugby or anything so you mm -hmm. kind of choose to pursue it way later Okay. In, in high school and and stuff. How did you get into it then? Beach or indoor? Or... Either way. Yeah, I mean, I had a really invested PE teacher who was like, you're tall. His name is Sam Ryburn, um, and he was great. Uh, and that is where I got started with it. And then started playing age group national team stuff and loved it. And then just knew that I wanted to keep playing at the college level. Um, and like, I didn't know Hugh or anything. He, he's from New Zealand as well. Um, but didn't know Hugh at Minnesota. He's from like, Min New Zealand? I yeah. Know. Yeah. I no idea. Huh. Yeah. He's a Kiwi. Interesting. Um, and I guess he just like took an interest in me and, um, and yeah, so that's how that started. But definitely it, I feel like everything had to happen the way it did. Like I, I look back and I'm like, cause I love beach so much. I'm yeah. like, Oh, I wish I had gotten to play more college beach. Um, but I feel like I like developed so much as a player at Minnesota that I was like, when I transferred, I knew like what I wanted for myself and out of the team and what I could contribute and, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, just ended up having a blast. Like I had a blast at Minnesota, but also had a blast at Florida State. I bet. Yeah. That's uh that's cool. I didn't even think about one you being from New Zealand I have yeah. no idea yeah I mean he's been here for so long now yeah 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 but I I initially was like obviously had huge respect for him because he's coached I think both the men's and women's national teams um to two different Olympics so I, I definitely was like I, I really want to learn from this person and yeah it was a really cool experience and obviously like Brooke Niles and Jason uh, were amazing for me as well um and yeah so lucky to still have chase yeah yeah is jason the reason you went down there or you had the connection to, go to down florida there? state yeah yeah no nah, i didn't know him either um hmm. it just is really weird how everything worked out yeah. uh but i ended up just really loving the vibe at florida state and the culture and just the school in general and the, the warmth the warmth yeah <laughs> oh after years of not seeing the sun i was like i can't leave yeah no it was cool like the college vibe is unlike anything else in terms of like what it can do for you as a player i feel like a lot of the like i mean kristen and taryn are just like really good examples i feel like they just developed within the college system and are like so ready to like yeah. hit the tour totally because of that yep um and I feel like it's just a machine. Yeah. At, at like the all elite the girls. colleges. Like yeah. Like the Minnesotas and Florida States and LSUs. Yeah. SC. Yeah. The funny thing is like you leave those schools and you're like, wow, it 
it's never going to be. I'm never going to feel as professional as I did when I wasn't professional. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> At least yeah, on the beach. Because totally. the facilities and like, yeah, yeah. like the football, the fan base and all that. Oh, uh, yeah. That's all. I mean, in the U.S., that's like basically our partially our professional sports, right? Mm, yeah. for sure. Well, now it is professional because people are getting paid. With the NIL. For sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I thought I was like, after college, I feel like I felt really like I had grown a lot as a person and was like ready to hit the tour. And then I was really lucky actually that Shauna was like so great in like helping me out during my first season because obviously it was a COVID year that we competed. I had zero points. And, like, we just traveled for, like, five months without going home. Just so crazy. Oof. It was every year it's like that, but it's, like, it's getting better. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely learned a lot with, you know, how to not get sick of each other and, like, how to keep, how to develop our friendship and professional relationship and then just, like, how to cope with losing when you're by yourself mm -hmm. and, like, all of that, so yeah it's crazy the whole yeah. beach lifestyle like to just throw yourself into it which is what most players have to do yeah it's just insane you're just like wow i have to grow up real quick yeah like straight out of college and jumping on tour you're like i gotta figure out how to travel by myself mm -hmm. buy flights figure out uniforms sign up for events not oh yeah miss uh sign-ins and... yeah hence why shauna was the admin girl <laughs> exactly forever. you need one forever. of those <laughs> You're yeah. just kind of following along like, wow, this is intense. And we can't change from those roles. Like, that is how it needs to be. Like, <laughs> You've gotten comfortable there. Yeah. yeah. I've like gotten that. comfortable. Everyone settles into their role, though. Maybe a couple yeah. weeks where you kind of figure it out. And then once you settle in, though, everyone knows. Like, yeah, you're, yeah. you're the practice sign-up guy. Right, right. You're this guy. <laughs> yeah. It's the way it has to be. Yeah, I've been slacking. <laughs> <laughs> I want to set the bar low, and then I can... Go up from there. Yeah, came if you're listening. Uh, Don't yeah, listen. Get him, get him going. <laughs> Don't listen. Your boy's luggage. Me and Trev were just kind of like bare minimum everything. So, you know, just yeah. setting the bar low so there's only up to go from here. For sure. Yeah. Oh, that's how I feel too. I feel like by this is our third year now together as a partnership. And it's like, I feel like now we're actually like, I know what is going on and like, mm -hmm how to be and what needs to happen so yeah it's it's like baptism by fire though because you said your first year it's just five months yeah on the road how yeah. hard was that i feel like the hardest part had to have been like emotionally i yeah. love having i'm such a homebody mm. i love having home base i love having my routine and when i'm on the road for too long i just get like sad burnt out yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean for sure i feel like it really goes up and down and for us, the first year, luckily, we qualified for every event we entered. So, like, I was, I didn't experience that feeling of not qualifying mm. and then flying all that way. And um, so, yeah, we had, like, a pretty good first year and I had loads of fun. And, you know, my birthday, I mean, has been overseas every year for the past however many years. So yeah. it's your like, birthday? It's in July, so, like, okay. right in the summer. Right in the middle. So I'm I've had some 20, really... I'm pretty much always gone yeah 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 but you have like cool location birthdays because yeah of that. that's true usually if like during a tournament or something uh, yeah. it was Cam's birthday in uh, brazil and that night we're like going out for dinner he's like oh yeah, let's go to outback it's my di it's my birthday you know <laughs> just like, casual. like oh surely brazilian yeah, barbecue oh brazil. yeah i was gonna buy sorry yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's fine yeah. <laughs> yeah no that's pretty standard i think the, yeah the road but but americans are lucky because we usually come back home like mm. we come back to home base as soon as we have the chance whereas like aussies and kiwis and i don't know who else does i feel like you guys canada. more than even anyone. the aussies canada, go home a lot the canadians don't go home yeah ever yeah. they just come here yeah so they have true. like a second home base a second home i mean yeah i feel like that's beginning to be more important to us is that reset and like we're really lucky to be I mean I feel really fortunate to come into the program at you know like after college at the right time where like Jace was freed up to come coach us again um, and then we also got funding from HP Sport New Zealand and so that really has helped us like 
be able to look after ourselves a little bit better. Yeah. Um, Because, yeah, we totally get burnt out and just, yeah. It's It's hard. That's I think that's the hardest thing for new players to really grasp is how hard it is being on the road. Like Mm. I just saw, I ran into Haley Harward uh, on the beach after they got back from Brazil. Okay. And she's like, I didn't even play that many matches, but I'm just really tired. Mm. It's like like, there's the feeling of being uncomfortable or slightly uncomfortable just because you're like not in your own bed and you just um, have this like your baseline level of stress is just higher higher. at all hours of the day and that that adds up when you're not used to it i mean now i think you're pretty accustomed to it it seems you're pretty settled in because you're on a a heck of a road trip right now i mean you haven't been home oh yeah i mean i feel like i've been gone for around two months now roughly (laughs) um i don't know the days all blur together but i mean it's one of those things where like you just got to do what you got to do. And like, I'm really fortunate to be, um, you know, having this like great training camp here mm-hmm. and like great, uh, practice partners and like great sand, you know, <laughs> yeah, explain. True. good weather. So it could be worse. You know what I mean? Like I, I do, it's New Zealand winter right now too. So I don't want to be, I don't want to be cold. Yeah. Yeah. Does it get cold? Like what's a New Zealand winter like? Um, I gotta, to be honest, I gotta come I, visit. I've never been. It's amazing. I literally haven't been through a New Zealand winter in like six years. So it's been a That's while. That's a good benefit of being on the road. Yeah. Um, but it snows on the mountains, but not on the ground. Okay. So like, you'll be okay. Okay. It's yeah. like, it's, if you're I think it's similar to California. Yeah. You can go to like, and have the most amazing mountain snow experience. Yeah. And then the same day, like if you drive far enough, you can go surf. Did you right. visit in the summer though when summer. you came? Yeah, it was okay. it was amazing. Perfect weather. Cool. And we were happy to hear that. <laughs> it's always awkward when someone's like, "Oh." The no. water was colder than I would have liked though. Yeah. Which kind of which makes me compare it to California. Mm. <laughs> it's not as deserty, like there's just like rolling green hills forever mm. and sheep everywhere. That is correct. Right? Uh but I'd say like the climate to me seemed California-esque. Yeah, the sun is very burny. Beaches like... were nicer, mm. I think. Okay. In New Zealand? Sand is whiter, like a little more Hawaii sand versus over here. Yeah, I mean, little... I'm biased for sure, but yeah. I feel like it's similar to Hawaii in many ways. It's like ways. Hawaii, California. It's like a Hawaiian, so California. It's, so it's mm. perfect. Hybrid. But it's so <laughs> far. Little, yeah. Water's like, a little yeah. cold, though. That is just the only downside is it's like literally the furthest you could get from anywhere so yeah what's a flight yeah. to here um a good one is like 10 hours but if you're traveling on a budget it's like stopovers right. and yeah. so Can you, you could go be, direct yeah direct to auckland from la yeah it's what like is, 10, 10 hours, hours. Oh, that's not 10 bad. to 12 depending on the wind okay, yeah right. i know these things but <laughs> <laughs> usually you got to go to like sydney or something like yeah that, right? normally it's like 18 hours is like 18 to 20 is like total okay. trip yeah it's like going to europe basically yeah you're gonna yeah. you're gonna go about yeah. 18 like if you're flying yeah. to doha i mean that's coming back is like 17 yeah but mm. then when you guys have to go to like europe that's when it gets yeah two really 12 gnarly. hours back to back oh. and then like layovers and everything do you so. go the asia way sometimes like Either honestly way. wherever there's no good the, wherever route. the wind takes us <laughs> is wherever the cheapest flights are come on bentley oh yeah see the emotional the support animal yeah showed yeah. up see i'm instantly more comfortable <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no it's not bad like well this month or the last two months was pretty bad like i went new zealand to here to mexico back to here to brazil to here then i went to the uk for a break for two weeks and then i you took a break really here. far away <laughs> yeah well my boyfriend's from there oh, okay so, that's fair yeah gotcha yeah oh that so the sad. mileage has been up there the last two months yeah that's good status or are you jumping around airlines oh you know i'm jumping around oh i'm not yeah <laughs> <laughs> i get that i get yeah. it yeah and then <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be cool, though. Like, I go home at the end of this month, and then we play in China next month, mm. and then hopefully back on to Europe. That's so. a continental? Asian champs. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's a big event for us because it's, like, the same points as a challenger. So Yeah. And, and is, that, uh, 
is that a route into world champs? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I honestly, I just turned up and play. So I don't know the logistics of like qualifying, but I think it's like, if you win, you're definitely in. Okay. Right. Like I'm thinking like top four in Asia goes. Whoa. That's how it is so, in Norseka. Top yeah. four go in Norseka? Yeah. Cause each, they split, <laughs> he doesn't even know. They, they split the tournament. Weird. Yeah. I don't know. They split the continental tournament in two. Uh, and if you just have to make your final huh but only yeah. one team per country because only one team could win that north Shaker thing right that happened the other day yeah it's only one per country right, right okay um yeah and then if you make your final you're in and then if we say like for our women it's that bid was kind of irrelevant mm -hmm. and so that what whoever if our women i forget who's even going Haley and kelly like mm. if they win then It'll go to whoever they beat in, the, in their semifinal, if they do win. I think that's where that bit will trickle down to. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, but I think Europe only gets like one continental bit. Really? That's what DJ Klasnich was telling me the other day. I was mm. like, damn, that seems harsh. Weird. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this year, I just can't think too much about it. I'm just going to turn up and like, Yeah. we're just going to win matches. Heck yeah. I think and that's man. the best way to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Winning matches. Too yeah. stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't choke and you'll be fine. <laughs> That's the best advice. Well, you have to be one of the only people I've ever met who just showed up first year on the world tour and qualified for every main draw. That's pretty I mean, impressive. I mean, I feel like, though, I mean, it was good. It was good for sure. But I feel like we're at the point now where, like, we're, like, a mid-major team and, like, sometimes, sometimes we win. Like, more, more often we're, like, not on podium. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, we're still kind of, like, in the proving ourselves. Yeah. Face. Dog's you okay, Bentley? <laughs> he Shaking. misses his mom. Well, you had, you guys had an awesome win in Torquay over Kristen and Taryn. That's yeah. a resume builder. For sure. Like, I mean, it's always, it's always good when you're like more of an underdog team, I feel like. Um, and yeah, I, I was really happy with how we played. And they're obviously like such a good team to play against. Um, so yeah, hopefully if we get a few more wins like that this year, they'd be good, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. It's so and, stacked. And that match, this is like full, this is like a confession. So I was commentating. Yeah. And I don't watch so any I, of the matches back. So I start, it's full film, so, I, <laughs> so I start and I was like, Alice and Shauna and I get, we have to keep our phones on cause our producers just message us on WhatsApp. Okay. Someone messages me and like, you're pronouncing your name like an American. It's Elise. And I was like. Now I'm freaking out. That I was is like, false. I was like, that can't <laughs> be right. I like had lunch with them in yeah, Australia. You me. And I <laughs> for sure called her Alice. But, like, but now I was thinking, was she being nice and just didn't correct me? Nah. So I was like, nah. And then I tried Elise. I was like, that sounds wrong. So I, the whole match, I just rotated. And after it, That's I was like, okay. that was awful. I like, respond I'm so to anything. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I honestly respond to anything. It's all good. I get it all the time. So Alice, not Elise. Yeah. So I apologize for that. Hey, it's right. okay. It's okay. <laughs> I was like, I met them. I hung out with them. Yeah. They didn't say anything. Do you watch your matches back? Or like, I mean, obviously the for film. The commentary and all that? Yeah. Nah, not usually. Yeah, I don't either. So, But now maybe I will when you yeah, you commentate. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. You Just call you Elise for now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Running joke. Yeah, I'll just do it scouting wise yeah. to watch it. I mean, it's so much faster. It's gonna, yeah. It takes like an hour to watch a match. Times two versus, speed. Yeah, when you can like click through on the volumetrics or whatever mm. i don't know if you guys have them broken down on that yeah we, jason has something for us but you can like know you know is. have they stopped uploading matches to volumetrics though mm. i don't time? know everything switched to huddle is it like a different site because when i go on it's volumetrics different. it's is still it? like stuck at torquay oh, oh really? yeah they're still uploading yeah. some i think but it okay. is volume or it's supposed to be on huddle now okay but yeah, you can like just be like, I want to watch all my serves, all my servers for you, yeah. all my blocks. So good. It's like 15 minutes. So you can just crush a whole match easy. Mm, for so, sure. No. But yeah, no, those girls are super fun to play. Uh, probably like, yeah, I mean, this year, anyone, anyone deep in the main drawer would be like a great experience. Like just because like, Obviously, like, we have some really great training partners in New Zealand, but, like, international level is, like, something that we don't get all the time. And, like, the hardest matches we'll play is, like, in competition. Mm -hmm. um, that's been, like, a great thing about training here is, like, 
rocking up to the beach and you've got like world-class teams yeah. on every street which is like so like such an advantage i feel yeah oh, for sure yeah. what's crazy is that Kristen and taryn are in new orleans yeah around no one like their training partners are 13 and 15 years old really it's just drew Kristen, taryn and these two sisters who are very good for really? their age yeah yeah what there's a training partner yeah that's I think wild ava and anna cole i would have thought there would be dudes like cause I think that's they, what yeah. like alex and april would do sometimes yeah. just bring two guys yeah. in to play a little more yeah physical. two smaller guys is like the best training partners you know because yeah. you don't want your confidence completely wrecked by like <laughs> you know six eight guy. some huge blocks <laughs> yeah I've been training with Molly Turner because she's playing with uh, Maddie May Anderson. Oh, yeah. Did I went to college cross? with Maddie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Love and it. so <laughs> I've been Molly's just like fill in Maddie. Okay, cool. And I'm, super I'm, similar. Like, one of the, yeah, <laughs> super also... similar. I'm a very tall female. Right. And so there we practiced against Zana and Deanna the other day. Okay. And I made a couple blocking moves. It was like, that was a little. Unfair. That was a little aggressive. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then what did they say? I told. Mm -hmm. Zana was like, okay, that was big. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, well. That'll happen sometimes. That's what I happened guess, when like... we played Phil for the first time. And <laughs> yeah. then I was, whoa, okay. Whoa. That was different. <laughs> but I told Molly, I was like, I'm just going to hit like 70% like around Zana so yeah. she can get good hard driven. She was like, great. But sometimes they would run an angle block uh... and I would accidentally just like OT Deanna. And Deanna was like, that was high. Yeah, that <laughs> was, was too high. That was big. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Whoops, so you kind of have to. You're just making them better. It's all good. <laughs> That's what they're it's saying. Too. They're very good about it. Okay, good. But, <laughs> There's yeah. some 6'5 girls on tour. Yeah, I mean, Pavin's taller than me. Yeah, and Brandy, and so Brandy is big too. She's super athletic. She flies, yeah. 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 How was it playing, having Dan as your practice partner the other day? Oh, so fun. Very <laughs> Brazilian. Yeah. I was like oh, Dan. loving it. <laughs> yeah. Very intense. Um, no, he's crack up. It was good. But Jay has actually been my practice partner a lot as well jason um, he's a good woman he's a good <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> no he's honestly he's so he's ready for his call up like he is he is putting in the work mm -hmm. yeah he's ready for his call up <laughs> yeah yeah he's ready to go he was really fun to watch play yeah back in the day yeah he was got it had to have been the smallest guy on tour on the world tour zandy maybe i think zandy's taller how tall is Jay? Taller? Like five seven? Five, eight? No, he is like my height, tall or maybe you? taller than me. He's like okay. five eleven. Jay's five eleven. Yeah. No, I'm way. five ten. What did you say? On. Five seven? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just Jay's listen not listen to he's this. listening to this. He's like, God damn. Okay. <laughs> what is Man. he? Five five? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, he's been great. He's been great. It's actually been like really good to just like get a lot of like individual feedback this month. Um, and yeah, obviously like I have never played against like players like Brandy really mm. or Sarah and Kelly. Um, so it's been really fun to like scrimmage against them and yeah, it's been, been a good month. Yeah. What's training like in New Zealand? What does that look like for you guys? I mean, it's really a lot of like stuff driven by Jace. Like he yeah. has been so instrumental with our program and Craig, um, Craig Susu and it's pretty like individual driven like just our core squad and um, we've got some really good like up and coming players who we'll scrimmage with um, my roommate Liv she's been great um, for us as like a practice partner and and yeah so we obviously like would like to go overseas more but because we're away so much of the year when yeah. we are home it's like we really just want to be home, but then it's like also maybe like the quality of reps is like for training is like not as good as overseas. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah for our sanity, it's good to be home. Yeah. Yeah. Where is yeah. where are you based in uh, New Zealand? I'm in the Mount. At Mount, Mount Maunganui. Maunganui. Yeah. It's a sweet it's spot. It's a vibe. Is that where you grew up? No, no. I'm from the South Island, which is like strictly indoor not much beach yeah. um so i definitely did not grow up around it colder is it like that much of a climate difference yeah it's cold i mean not really like uh less i think it's like a less nice beach and stuff like that okay. um but yeah yeah the mount is definitely i think like the best spot 
Oh yeah. In New Zealand, it's, one uh, of the best towns to live in. That's one. Yeah. One of my. It's. I could easily live there. Actually, I thought about it while we're having this podcast. Like, really? <laughs> I See, I could live in Hawaii. I'm like. <laughs> well, I, I, wanna, I actually want to live in Hawaii, but. Yeah. Really. I, I personally would rather live in New Zealand than California, for sure. Okay. Big call. Cool. New but Zealand and to... Stad are top two on my bucket list. Really? Oh, you yeah. haven't been okay. to Stad. Haven't been to Stad. No, that's worth seeing. Are you gonna Are you gonna go this year? Maybe can't go this year because it's over ABP Hermosa. Mm, can't miss an ABP. And it's but not Hermosa. Yeah, yeah. it's killing him. <laughs> yeah, no. <sighs> hope I'm not main draw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope I am. Yeah. Yes, it is killing me for sure. I mean, yeah. I've never played Stad either, and like I really hope that we get close to getting in this year. I mean, last year we were like first on reserve and oh. rocked up to Switzerland, and it was just, of course, because we went, we didn't get it. Right. Like, it's always like. And when you're first on the reserve, that's like, you're almost guaranteed to get in. Yeah, People drop it's almost out all the time. 100%. Oh, that's yeah. the worst. So you guys went up there? Yeah, which yeah. Which is pretty pricey. No, we actually have a friend who's lovely um, oh, who good. let us stay with her. So it was, it was chill. Yeah, because like yeah. not not the town you want to be like buying a few nights hotel no. and eating out at the restaurants, no. especially by like month three of being on the road. You're like, oh, need to rein it in. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Isn't it so fun after traveling the world as much as you have? You're like, oh yeah, we have a friend who's lovely who lives in Stockholm, right? Yeah. And well, you can just stay here in Hermosa with yeah. Lisa, and just like you can just travel around the world. Yeah, I mean, it's really great like lisa has been so awesome with letting me loiter as long as i have i'm like please tell me if i'm a pest like i will go elsewhere but she's been really great and like little things like being able to cook a home-cooked meal i'm like that was priceless Mm -hmm. you know um and yeah being somewhere where i feel comfortable so yeah shout out to lisa (laughs) yeah you really can't put a price on that just being comfortable right? yeah is it and it's i feel like it's so hard to stay fit on the road mm, and I mean, you've obviously mastered that yeah it's traveling for so long is really weird i mean you just really uh for me i, I think structure has been really good um trying to find structure in the day like obviously i'm in law school right now so it's really hectic and i'm always doing lectures like on the plane or when i'm really jet lagged and or, you know, tired, like, during right. tournaments. Um, so it's been, like, sh- having structure in the day, being, like, it doesn't matter, like, where we are right now, but I'm going to have my, like, routine has been mm-hmm. pretty good for the for keeping sane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I could... You need something to keep you just tethered to reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Doing law school on the road, I'm so worthless, like, in terms of, like, Travis probably knows being a business partner. <laughs> but, oh, tries on the road. is completely worthless yeah. now. Doing yeah. law school? But, if I was yeah. only doing law school in my life, I'd be worthless. But Dude, like, don't... You no, need to be no, focused, though. Like, no. it's, you just got to compartmentalize. Like, yes. we all know our roles, yes. right? Like, Kane's the team mom, and <laughs> yeah. you're the white mamba, and I'll take care of the pot <laughs> when dad's away. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Provide the house. Yeah, yeah like, there you go. You provide the studio. Yeah, you provide lots. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely... I'm staggering to the end, but, like, I'm almost there, so... Yeah, it'll be worth it. Um, but yeah, I think it's been good because I definitely couldn't be like obviously I'm all in volleyball, like I'm all in. Yeah. But then it's also really good to have a balance, and mm-hmm. I'm not like my whole sense of self is not just in, or like all my interests is not just in there. Like right. I have other other interests and stuff. So yeah, yeah, I think that's important too. That's kind of what I feel like I have with this. Mm. where we're kind of learning the business side of it and building something outside of volleyball, it can put more pressure on your performance on the sand, right? If you don't have something outside. Yeah. For having sure. a lawyer as a, being a lawyer as a backup plan is not bad. Oh, <laughs> not yeah. a bad option. I feel like it's going to be, it's, yeah, I stress about like, cause I obviously am never in New Zealand and I spend all my time like Everywhere. at volleyball. Right. So it's like, uh, I worry about like my life after volleyball mm-hmm. a little bit, just the adjustment mm-hmm. in terms of, yeah, like 
will I be re- actually good at this in the real world? But I feel like, yeah, I'll figure it out. And yeah, for sure. We, we've kind of noticed ha- talking to so many athletes that like, there's almost like not really a better tool to learning how to deal with the real world than like doing this mm. playing beach volleyball where you just have to do everything yeah for yourself basically running your own brand business you know accounting all yeah. your stuff and flights and travel and for sure. going out and dealing and the adversity with adversity so- sponsors adversity yeah. pressure like other people wait till they're 25 30 whatever and they're like you know kind of sitting around dilly dallying doing other things having fun yeah but they're comfortable yeah like there's not much comfortable no <laughs> i agree 100 percent. i feel like yeah so you'll be ready okay thanks guys <laughs> thanks for that pep talk i don't know I either like i'm really just hanging on for as long as i can <laughs> yeah but <laughs> i'm in it. the same boat <laughs> we've started calling this th- sandcast therapy Yes, nice yeah just... <laughs> i feel really good I'm a therapy dog we brought in... <laughs> <with> <laughs> therapy <laughs> chats <laughs> Yeah. The therapy dog. <laughs> nah, like I'm not worried about it. I just feel like it's just gonna be an adjustment, you know. But like you said, it'll be it'll be all good. Yeah. It is hard though because every athlete who gets to this level has played <laughs> at least he can't decide if he wants to stay or yeah. go. Go. Okay. But you've done sports for so long, it's so hard yeah. to imagine life without them. Yeah. Like where you feed that competitive Fire, and that's what I was totally. at a, um, the CBVA this weekend, and oh, yeah. I was uh, catched up with Travis Wallison. Mm. Have you met him? Yep. And he he's pretty much done playing. He just kind of plays for fun and and just for exercise. Mm. And he uh, he was just talking about how he he hasn't been able to find a replacement for that like big win or adrenaline rush, rush and that's the one yeah. thing he misses. Mm. Interesting. And it's, I think that's probably the hardest thing to replace. Mm. Is that yeah. just big? I was moment. thinking about that. Like, how do you simulate being yeah. in front of a crowd under pressure, having to, like, go to a different place? Yeah. That white mamba place that you're talking about. <laughs> like, how do you find that 16, 12 second set Manhattan Beach Open where yeah. you have four blocks and right. you're going to lose? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sh- it'd just be like finding the fight or flight response triggers, yeah. you know. But I feel like everything outside the sport would be, like, dangerous to explore, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Maybe yeah, right. You don't exactly. Want to be you have to skydive, or yeah, yeah. I might start surfing way too big a wave. <laughs> yeah. <after this. laughs> yeah. Just be like for Laird the rush. Hamilton, just like yeah. Yeah. 50, itching, 50 just like, what do I do? I, I don't know what yeah. to do with myself. Just sure. bombing mountains on yeah. mountain bike or something. Yeah, that's one idea. That's one um, idea. Yeah. <laughs> there are other options, maybe. Yeah. I found backpacking. It doesn't give you the flight or the fight or flight Unless, response until you run into a grizzly bear. Yeah. Yeah. But being in nature just with no other stimuli i found that that has a like a mentally soothing effect Mm. that i actually am starting to love way more than competition okay cool and i think that there'd be good backpacking in new zealand so i think you'd be in a good spot yeah 100 (laughs) percent. great backpacking you can go through the shire oh yeah i mean (laughs) the shire is definitely like it's so hobbiton is obviously like have you been or no, uh, no, yeah. So this Can is a thing, by the way. Me? When I went to New Zealand, get on the plane, and the uh, safety video was done by the characters from from Lord, Lord of the, the Rings. Rings. Yeah. Show up like their whole tourist industry was like based around that movie. That, this is it. like what yeah. ten, all, year, ten years ago. It was all filmed in New Zealand. Yeah, and okay. then you see it. signs like this way to Hobbiton, and you can actually go it's to a the real Shire. Place. Yeah. Like the whole place where they filmed it, and oh, I don't know, I didn't end up going, but it's definitely it worth funny. it. It looks exactly how it is on screen. Is it really small? Like we we all have to like yeah, hunch they over, don't let like, you inside the oh lame. the little houses, but <laughs> you can you can have a beer in like the Green Dragon or Green Lane. I forget what it's called, but the pub yeah. that's yeah. like right, in right, the right. Shire. Huh. I, I mean, it's cool. You should definitely like you guys should definitely come back and play the tour. And uh, Could that be our first go event? hiking. New Zealand. <sighs> you know, it's I've been trying to. It's been six and, years. I've been trying to get it to play a tournament with me. Dude, and we'll go do podcasts come. out there. So it's uh-huh. on the Sandcast debit card. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Business, business now we're trip. Talking. After <laughs> after the like Aussie tournaments at the end of the year, like Ooh. you guys just pop over. And then maybe hit Bali while we're there. 
Might as well. Yeah. While we're out there. <laughs> While we're there. <laughs> we're out there. It's like that southern hemisphere. Yeah. Call up Delaney kind and Gab. Of. Sorry, we got uh, more business. We got to delayed do in, in Bali. Bali. More business. <laughs> yeah. Someone plays volleyball over there. We gotta go. <laughs> yeah. We gotta go interview them. <laughs> Dude, that is honestly. This is the next business venture for you guys is setting up like a beach facility in Bali because it's so cheap. Yes. Yeah. And like great, like great waves. Yes. And good climate. And like literally, I have friends that go all the time and they get an Airbnb for the week for like a hundred bucks. Yes. For like, and it's like five bedrooms for and a week? pool. And like, oh, yeah. I was yeah, like, it's crazy. I, was, I was rich. I went for a honeymoon. So I had like, we had oh, okay. saved up, we had some money saved up for it. And we're like Which looking for deals, need. right? Yeah. Wait, what? We can, we can stay here, just like oh, s- sitting over the ocean, like at Uluwatu, like all these places, oh. like in, in the rice paddy fields, and like these sick places. Yeah. With a pretty average budget, but it's a steal. It, it was just like yeah. But now a picture steal. like getting some sort of like acom set up, getting some courts put mm-hmm. in. Like it would be such a good and at the volleyball the vacations weather, we bring people out. Yeah, but the weather is so good for like training because it's so hot True. and like and it's kind of like on the way, you know. Yeah. I don't it's know. It's not if this on the way to much. It's more of a commercial for New Zealand <laughs> or Bali at this point. I know. Let's rein it in. Let's <laughs> food for thought. When is the New dreamers. Zealand tour though? Um, it's over your winter, so our January February mm-hmm. is when it normally runs um and yeah it's it's really homegrown i'd say like it's like a lot of like individuals putting in a lot of hard work yeah um and how many so, stops now we, we only had three when i played yeah i think it's like five five okay but it depends like depends so we need some good international players to to come for a beach holiday i would love to come back out Time me up. I need an excuse. Cool. Where do we get wild cards? Excuse. I'll play with the 5'7 uh, Ginger Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Easily. He'll give you guys the best drawer. That would be a great pickup. <laughs> yeah, he's going to hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Just the... He's definitely 5'11. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you have your phone on you? We can look this up. Look up how tall Jay is? Yeah. We could text him. BBB. Yeah. <laughs> get him on. Yeah. <laughs> the pod mama doesn't kick yeah. us out. But... Seriously, I would love to play on that because that's that was really that was like your first international experience, wasn't it, Try? That was my first. Uh, I think it was before. Yeah, so like I basically quit indoor. Or I didn't take an indoor contract, and I did that instead mm. for like the second half of the year, and it was amazing. Yeah, they have this thing where every player that's come out has like gotten a big break after that on the world tour. There were some good like, players when Randy's I was there. Randy's been there. You've been there. Brink and Reckerman uh, were there. Yeah, I think they were there when they started. I'm sure like Lauda has been there um, as well. When I was there, Chantal. Oh, Chantal. Laberer. And uh, yeah, Schultz. Chantal Laberer. And um, uh, so Sude. if you. Julia yeah. Sude. Mm. So if They're you want to win on the world tour, basically you have to go to New Zealand. Requirement. Because that's like, we're still waiting for that energy to like hit us. But <laughs> right. for everyone else, it works. <laughs> well, you guys have had a pretty good run. Were there any New Zealand female role models for you to follow? Like, did you have a Misty and Carrie type? Obviously no one reached that oh, type yeah. of success, but. I mean, in New Zealand, honestly, like, I'm a few years younger than like Shauna, my partner Shauna, um, and then you know, like Julia Tilly was really big, like Alice Bain, um, yeah, Olivia McDonald, like all those girls were definitely role models for me. Um, I had a really crazy experience though the other day at practice, like um, Misty, like came in for a couple of drills and i was like in my head like what is going on like <laughs> misty, is... misty jumped in practice yeah just for like a couple of reps uh-huh. with me and i was like, <laughs> like <laughs> this is so i was like be cool don't just don't double the set like don't. yeah it was really crazy because the first beach volleyball i ever watched was like her and kerry in uh-huh. london right. like ever and i was this little like 13 year old or yeah. like you know it's wild. It's pretty mental. Dang. Yeah. Because Misty, I think, still plays. Was that Thursday that she jumped in? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Because she plays in this high-level fours group. It's like okay. Misty, 
April, Holly McPeak, Jeez. Nancy Reno. Whoa. It's you like, need to bring those girls on the podcast. We need to film Don't. that. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get some serious uh, it, yeah. views. It's like, it's like the female 21st Street. Oh, <laughs> so wow. Actually, yeah. Where are they going? Uh, 30th. Oof. It's. I think it's every Tuesday. Now a Thursday. crowd's going to show yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> when, uh, when Holly came in, she was talking about it. It's like, all of you guys are still playing. She goes, and the banter. And April's in there hasn't now? Left. Really? I think April pops in here and there, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> impressive yeah i i would definitely be impressed like yeah those girls can probably still bang a ball probably yeah so but i mean you and shauna are kind of trailblazing a little bit for new zealand oh yeah i mean it's been really cool obviously i feel like jay is a huge part of that for us um but also it has been really weird with like we do have a bit of imposter syndrome with it being like confidence to show up and be like, Oh, we can compete. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when we like turn up with like, I think Americans have that good competitive mentality, like so easily, like New Zealand is like head of the participation award. Like, <laughs> like in, in terms of the energy, like it's like yeah, been really hard for us to be like really like killer mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's becoming more like natural, you know, like obviously we're competitive, competitive people. Right. But yeah. it's one thing to like believe you can win, yeah. you know, against like some of the teams mm -hmm. on tour yeah. all the time. Um, I always so, wonder yeah. what would have happened if Sam O'Day had kind of a killer mindset. Because that dude is such an athlete. Yeah, like both, Ben's all kind the of a killer. Days. Ben's but man, for sure. they're just such good athletes. And Sam is just like as cool, as calm as you like. Yeah. Both of them, they gave us like serious run for our money. Yeah. Me and Will Montgomery when we played on that tour. That was kind of like the team to beat. Okay, yeah. Those guys are legit. And I even saw them play more recently in Cancun. And like they still got it. They're, they for had sure. it. For sure. Freak athletes. But it was always yeah. like. For sure. Do they want it that, I mean, obviously if yeah, they had totally. the support and the, yeah. the resources that we have over here, it would be a whole different story. Yeah. But like, yeah, it was I think, still like. I mean, from, I've gotten to know those guys pretty well in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Like just we travel, I traveled a bunch with Sam last year and I feel like timing is like everything. Yes. And yeah, like those guys worked super hard during yeah. their careers and yeah it'll be good uh i think ben is gonna play asian champs ah. next month so like that'll be fun to have him back on tour Heck yeah um and yeah no they are su they are a big part of the beach community back right. home for sure for sure and they've yeah. kind of spearheaded the men's side for like a decade now right they've kind of been the guys on the men's side for sure yeah yeah some of them i mean we actually have like quite a good like men's squad um, but yeah, like obviously like Jay has been trying to bring like a whole program up in yeah. like two years. Right. You know, we're here as good support from volleyball New Zealand, but it's in terms of like making us better players and like working with us every day, I feel like he's managed like 20 athletes, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, which is a lot. So, yeah. It's cool to see the New Zealand program like coming up, especially yeah. watching, um, like all the, the Torquay events where it was just the, like every flag I saw was the Australian or New Zealand flag. I was like, it's kind of cool. And yeah. before it would, you'd see an Australian or New Zealand team and you might think, all right, well, that's probably a pretty decent draw. Mm. And then I was looking at the teams that Australians and New Zealand's New Zealanders were beating. I was like, that's a good win. Like that team's solid. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, it's, it's been pretty crazy. Um, yeah, the Aussie girls have been doing really well within their program. And, yeah, I I feel that I want to get, um, like, keep building our program. I feel like we lose a lot of younger players at the moment to the college system. So I feel like it'll go with, like, up and down. Right. A bit. The go, NCAA college back. system? Or yeah. Your, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is Nothing there, in New Zealand. I didn't, is there a college system? Like, I mean, obviously no, you have colleges, no. but... Indoor in new okay. zealand but like not nothing with like scholarships and yeah. like the the type of like matches and stuff yeah you know? 
Not at it's, all. it's an interesting way to look at it because you say that you kind of lose girls to the college system, but in a way, the college system is like the greatest training pipeline. Totally, <laughs> totally. But that I mean, we have like quite a small pool of beach athletes yeah. right now, um, and so we can't afford to like lose any. Right. right. But you know, I think it's heading in the right direction for sure. Well, yeah. eventually they'll be coming back from college, right? Yeah. Like, now they're feeding back once it like the full cycle hits then you're getting the athletes back but better totally. hopefully yeah but yeah you're losing like four years of working and playing with those athletes right yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah what's your schedule look like oh up? it's so up in the air yeah i think like we had planned to be away the whole year like literally the whole year we <laughs> might so crazy. we might have been uh, going home and like kind of if we get into world champs like after world champs or you know for a month or so but yeah. it's gonna be like pretty hectic um yeah i think we're gonna I think we're gonna try play like a bunch in europe and then reset after that mm-hmm. and then you know we might play a few of the new new challenges and yeah, that have go. been put in but oh, yeah yeah how is Shauna doing, by the way? She's doing good. I mean, obviously, it's pretty, like, mentally hard. Like, as athletes, you get hurt all the time. Yeah. Um, But it is just really frustrating for her. And, like, so she's been dealing with that and just, like, the unknowns of that whole rehab process. Right. Um, but she's doing really well and she'll be back soon. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, it, like, for me, when we're, like, overseas, it's pretty rough because you do feel like a bit of drift and your routine and like nothing is up to you yeah and uh and yeah obviously like pulling out of events is really rough like because we flew all the way to brazil and then couldn't play and um yeah so i feel like i really had to focus on the good things Mm -hmm. a lot and and it wasn't anyone's fault and it wasn't up to anyone it was just a situation so yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you guys like deal with, deal that? with that? There's, there's just no welcome good way. the machines at this point. <laughs> no, I just deal with it. Yeah. I mean, we go home. That's yeah. All. <laughs> That's yeah. a huge thing. It's like tough to I compare. Said, <laughs> yeah. We're not like stuck on the road usually for that long. Um, but yeah, same thing. Mm-hmm. Usually, you're when your partner's out, you're just like, I, I've flown, actually, I did Brazil where Hayden threw his back out basically before we left and they used to have a weird rule where you can't pull out or we're giving you zero you know you get a zero it was whatever in that weird even though we had a doctor's note um so he showed up and played and in warm-ups of the first match like threw his back out again Uh, oh no so it's like we just flew down there for no reason yeah so i've kind of been there done that but you kind of just have to accept it like everyone everyone goes through it everyone's gonna have it at some point this yeah. is just your time to go through it. Hopefully, it's not bad timing. Yeah. Hopefully, you don't do it intentionally like I did. Uh, I broke my hand uh, <laughs> in a five star. <laughs> did you? After we won the match. Okay. Celebrating too hard? Or Celebrating. Like, okay. Yeah. So, that's not good. I mean, that's not the best. <laughs> we were, but... For Olympic points. Yeah. But, um, so I don't know. You asked Trevor how that one felt. <laughs> that could have been like the you thing that, that ru- you ruined our Olympics. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and break Point being, hand. yeah, you just deal with it. Yeah. I feel like we've been really lucky too with the past few years. Like we really haven't had anything that's like really interrupted our mm-hmm. flow. Um, so yeah, hopefully this will just be like. Honestly, it could be, bit. it could be a great thing. Cause like, let's say you guys are just grinding super hard right now and pushing yourself super hard mm. by the end of the year in like what we saw last year that those events ended up being watered down you guys are kind of fresh going into those totally when people are kind of burnt out yeah whereas and we'll catch everyone off guard exactly yeah that's the point. Nah, for sure like we got a lot of our points towards the end of the year so yeah and whatever happens happens i feel like that's been the craziest thing because it's like like i was saying this year yeah. has felt like the first year where like i know what's going on i know how to balance everything and then like obviously this happened and it was just like mm-hmm. you know you got to deal with it so yeah. i was yeah 
I don't like yeah. look back whenever I've, I've had those long injuries during the time and you're like, oh my God, I'm out for this chunk of season. Like it feels like a like half season or whatever. Mm. But then at the end of the season, you're like, oh, it actually wasn't that long. It went by pretty quick. Even if it's like a six to eight week thing, mm-hmm. like a breaking a bone or something. Yeah, for sure. In the long run, looking back, you're usually like, eh, it wasn't, it wasn't that long. Yeah. You know, just hopefully the timing wasn't bad like yeah. it was for me. For sure. Like, yeah. honestly, like, <clears throat> I can't, probably the only really bad thing to happen on tournament, touch wood, is like after <laughs> we played, <laughs> literally, we played, uh, we played the Rwanda, like, two star as my first FIVB event, and then everyone got sick after oh. that trip. Like, and yeah, we were totally fine until I literally like flew in to we were playing an an event in Bulgaria like the following week so we flew into Bulgaria and I just got horrendously sick and I was like in a hospital in Bulgaria and it was like a couple of IVs later and a whole lot of drugs and then I was like playing but I was just like barely there yeah you know um that's probably the worst thing did you guys win that one no, nah, we we made it to quarters in every game. I was like, please let us lose. It's the, <laughs> it's the only time because like my pride. I was like, I can't quit. Yeah. But then I like, please beat us. I just need to play. <laughs> just go through the motions. I literally. Like, Damn it, I'm winning, dude. I literally didn't warm up. I was like, Shauna. I was like, I, I was like sitting down uh-huh. and then just like stand. Like Shauna, if it was not within a meter radius of me, I was not getting it. Like, it yeah. was just yeah too too much it was so hot too oh yeah good times bulgaria was my home away from home that summer really me and rob pretty much we like leased a hotel room for like a couple months it's pretty good over there yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty... well they took that uh facility down really the yeah. beach club yeah that was pretty nice it like was, it was awesome they had a nice gym downstairs like the restaurant was solid the courts were pretty good yeah we totally. were there because we kept um because we didn't have, we had three AVP events, and they were all at the end of summer. And so me and A Rob just played. I think we played ten or twelve FIVBs that year. Mm. And we would always just Bulgaria was our home. Really? So we would just See, that's good to know to for me for next time. Like, yeah. I vowed never to go back to Bulgaria, but like maybe, <laughs> maybe I will. But we loved it because that place was. I mean, the hotel was pretty cheap. It was yeah. really affordable. The food was affordable. Yeah. The facilities were awesome. In Bulgaria, like, it was pretty cheap. Now you're to a get movie star. Now, now we're movie Dude, movie. yeah. Oh, so you were in that movie. Yeah. I okay. don't think it's ever going to see the light of day, but. Yeah, where is the movie? Yeah. We need to find this <laughs> you gotta out. Ask your reef. <laughs> there you go. I was excited about it. It was yeah. side out number two. It was. Three. I mean, really, the guy who should be disappointed is not going to come out as Jake McNeil. Oh, Jake yeah. McNeil was the star. That was his highlight. <laughs> Jake McNeil's another one that came to New Zealand too. He lived there for yeah. like six months, I think. Yeah. See, I didn't even know he that. He loved it. K Spear. K Spear was out there. Was he? Jeremy K Spear and Mark Burek were there when we were there. Oh yeah. Just throwing out more names there. I think Ben Vaught and Dave McKenzie were out there this year. Dave yeah, McKenzie. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Ben Vaught bringing him out of retirement. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I think he lives in Asia and yeah, then just yeah, yeah. like came over. Yeah, he's like, oh, my wife's not going to be happy that I'm here, but, like, we're playing and, like, we're, yeah. Ben was so funny, man. After they played, the, like, a couple events, and then Ben came back, and he was like, yeah, Dave only trained, like, two times between events. I was like, yeah, he's retired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should be happy you trained twice. <laughs> mm, yeah, for sure. Like, I, I had some friends from college visiting, and I tried to get them to, like, you know pepper a little bit and they were like firm no like i cannot (laughs) cannot run i cannot run (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, once you stop the body just forgets yeah (laughs) i feel like it's just like why yeah no no we'll be fine do you guys have like a like we have the manhattan open that's okay that's our biggie okay does new zealand have a like what's your biggie the mount Probably the Mount. Mount is the home for beach. Okay. But yeah, so Manhattan is the the king of the AVPs for you guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So are you still hyped for this weekend? Yes. Yeah. Big time. Anything I love California. Huntington, yeah. Anything in Southern California is, is awesome. It's going to be good? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You want to kind of check off the boxes of like getting a win 
or or a good finish or like a good stadium court match depending on who you are on the like major california beaches okay it's kind of a big deal right? this is yeah. really interesting for me because i feel like i've never asked you guys about the avp but like uh, the southern california stops what we need to do is get you a student visa you yeah gotta, like, do the like a grad transfer or yeah. something or, or start like be, the process you start right. the process <laughs> and then, or do like one form a day exactly yeah and yeah. then play like manhattan the qualifiers on site and it's it's or hard just to come really and hang out at showbacks yes yeah. yeah. half the experience right there <laughs> well yeah i'm gonna be fangirling this weekend i think and i'm i'm in lisa's box for coaching in nice Macaulay, so i'm pretty oh out. there we go yeah have you been down to huntington no nah, well probably like when i was younger but okay can't remember that i love Too huntington long. it's like uh it's like a blue collar version of Hermosa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's cool. And the crowds are good, and I think they'll be big because it hasn't been in Huntington for a while. Cool. So I'm I'm excited. Who so, are you guys I'm, most hyped to play against? Well, I'm in. Me and Sam are number one in the qualifier. Yeah. So oh. Hopefully, nice. just getting in the main draw. I think either Travis and Sam Schachter or Alison and Yeah Baranek. Oh yeah. Al- playing Alison in the AVP. That'd be Ooh. fun. That'd mm. be fun. Alison in the AVP qualifier. Who'd have seen the day? Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Wait, Dream he's in the quality? He's a three side. Dream draw. And three then Shakhtar is in the quality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Actually, and then the we're the one insane. seed, so we're going to draw whoever the comes qualifier. out. The worst quality. Is that Alison, potentially? Well, like right he, now, the, 30, the 32 seed in the qualifier just made a the final of the CBVA open. So like, it's one of the gnarliest qualifiers I've seen for the men. Yeah. Like, there's usually in a, like a 32 team qualifier, you'll get like the first round. God, I don't want Alison in the first yeah. round. But <laughs> well, you, you won't. Know, that it mathematically okay. it can't happen. How about you? No, I won't. Cause get you're it. one, but it's just yeah. pole play, right? So like, obviously every no, game we run double it. limb. Really? Double limb, yeah. oh, so we go straight to the okay. losers bracket and make our life miserable, <laughs> which we did in Hermosa last <laughs> no. year. Yeah. Adversity is good, you know what I mean? Like yeah, you gotta sure. get that loss out yeah. <laughs> gotta get I that loss out the way. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. What's your thoughts on double limb versus pool play? I'm such a double mm-hmm. limb purist, but them also my I feel like the US is the only place that runs double elimination tournaments. Yeah, see I have such a boring answer for this and it's because I literally just turn up and play. Like Shauna is the one to ask for that. <laughs> like You're like me. Like I don't. Whatever care. is less stressful, like that's the one. <laughs> pool play. That I, yeah, you I like. Can, you can lose early in pool play. Yeah, okay, and still so make it. That's yeah. my answer. Pool yeah. play. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but as a spectator this weekend, double limb is just fine. You know, because then it'll be like yeah. a it's good crowd experience. Yeah, I think yeah. it's easier to follow a double limb. It's easier yes. to follow a bracket. Right, for sure. Than to wonder like why this team that lost once, but they're in the same position. You got as pool this ratios team. and yeah. all that. Yeah. Like I trying like to do the math for you guys in uh, Uberlandia. I was like, I. That was stressful. Yeah. 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 So, what about you guys? Like, what's your calendar going to be this year? Uh, or what are you excited for? Well, it just depends if um, if we can crack into the Elite 16, which is a tough task. It's brutal. These at days, the very tough task. But you guys just got a good finish in Brazil. Yeah, we got a fifth. So, that kind of helps us. But that's like. You like have to get a fifth or better to like actually make Maintain, the main draw yeah. uh, of elites. But yeah, I think we'll go to pretty much all the. We'll pick and choose a few challengers to skip probably, but mm. pretty much go to all the elites and then end of the year figure it out. Yeah, I'm like hoping that in some way it makes sense to skip Stad. I've been there like seven times. Oh, we get it. Must be nice. To skip start. <laughs> skip That's start. like my bucket list event. <laughs> to play in Hermosa. Look how close we are to the beach right oh, now. I could throw God. a volleyball down to the court. I could sleep in my bed right That's here. That's okay. Yeah, that I, I get where you're coming from, but I have to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, Stad's I've, on the bucket list. I've Enter. been there like seven times, and last time I went there, it rained on me while I was playing, and I was in a tank top. While seeing my breath. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I don't like... I was cold today. My hands were too cold to play today. (laughs) Such a Cali boy. (laughs) Not even. (laughs) Tell him out. Hawaii. (laughs) Hawaii. So, yeah, that's the plan. And we're planning on skipping Hamburg, which is an epic event. Mm. 
at least last time I played there. Dude, you and Trevor, neither of you are allowed to skip Manhattan. Yeah, I'm fine Because Trevor's that. won three in a row and Trevor's won two in yeah. a row. Oh, really? For the fans. Yeah, you can't. You so can't just go let someone year? else win it. No. What's the what, what? What's the bet this year? You know, like, if you guys draw or, like, who's going to win? <sighs> oh, I mean, what do you want me to say? <laughs> yeah. Is that a guarantee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let Trevor Surely, for you, surely you guys have keep uh, keeping bets, like, bets, um, finally, you know. No, but I mean, there's enough on the table. I don't think we have to put yeah, anything else totally. on it. I, it's basically me getting to uh, share his streak that was pretty impressive. Yeah, so but it's also me line. breaking my hand that gave him the streak. Mm. So you know, and we're gonna like I see us being old one day and having to talk about this stuff. So it's like I better take care of business now. Yeah, so yeah, I don't, yeah. Because he's just gonna use it. For the rest Forever. of his life. Like, well, I have more yeah. Manhattan, so. That's what Tim so that's what's on still the line. using that. Exactly. <laughs> He's 60 something. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I got more Manhattan. Karch is, doesn't have as many as me, right? He <laughs> still claims that. Yeah. Or does Karch have more? Mm. No, I think Hav. Does it, Hav well, have the record? Well, Hav and Dodd have the record for most in a row. In a row, yeah. I need to boost my AVP knowledge right now. Well, like, Travis is your guy. I'm here for dude, you. Dude, I yeah, I need a full rundown this weekend. Well, you'll be focused, but... You need to come to the Manhattan Open and then proper shellback party after. Okay. Hopefully I win. Yeah, get get your visa in the process. Yeah. You get carried talk, into shellbacks. Talk, talk to Shaq really? about getting your visa in okay. the process. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I've never seen an AVP like... I feel like I've maybe watched a couple of matches, but like I've never like seen it live. I think the so coolest I, vibes. Stadium court's always fun, but I think the coolest is like an outer court on a Saturday afternoon. Okay. It's an like the seventh yeah. place match into fifth is always so intense because it's an elimination match. It's it's like in the evening. Yeah. There's a ton of fans, and the fans in the outer courts, it's pretty intimate. Like you're walking right. back to serve, and someone can just like say Saturday something right here. Yeah. Saturday, late Saturday. Yeah. Is like really cool that's prime time energy. yeah see no wonder you guys like do good on the world tour if you have like that kind of prep that's true like kiwis are just not that kind of energy you know yeah. like yeah they might do again, like a you golf do have clap. like the all blacks <laughs> like, are from new zealand the what the all blacks oh yeah for sure they got the energy oh 100 percent. you guys just need to do the haka before we need you some play. rugby fans to come to our <laughs> <Yeah>. games <laughs> just do the haka dude yeah i would love to see Love to see some players on tour's reactions after that. That would be so epic if you and Shauna just started doing that as your warm up. Mm. Like you get your ten just minutes on go the court. all the way up to the net, just face against the net. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, like I'd need to like really put in some work because right. a yeah. little practice, a little practice. <laughs> need to deliver a good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Stuff. And Jason too. Jason can come in there. I would love to yeah. see that. That would be amazing. Ginger, no Polynesians. No. I was like the blonde, the two gingers. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure. Same as me, growing up in Hawaii. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Still got a rock head. <laughs> 100%. No, it's cool. It's definitely cool energy. Like, yeah. That would fire me up. Fire Heck me yeah. up. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you'll have fun. I think cool. it'll make you want to scam your way into the system yeah. somehow scam i know i'm like who i literally was thinking it there i'm like who would know and i'm like everyone would know <laughs> plus like morally i'd feel bad like if we did if we won and then you know like i wasn't actually supposed to be in there so i don't know like you'd make the product better thank you like, you would make the on-court product better which is good for the avp which is good for the players thank you that that is what's going to be on my application for a green card and but the players I'll, I'll might off. not think that. Yeah. Like a bunch the of players. players you beat. I'd be too sensitive too. I'd be like, wait, you don't Sorry. want me here? <laughs> no, yeah. you got to come out and do the haka on the AVP. Yeah. And, and then smash everyone. Mm. <laughs> That's how. So yeah. many people were talking about Alisson. They're like, can you believe they're letting him play? I'm like, he should be playing. Mm. Like, that's going to be such a big fan draw. Should be. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, but yeah. they're not going to promote it. Out of wild card. They're not going to use it as a fan draw. Yeah, it's too logical. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best blockers uh, of all time. Do you guys? You guys need to give this feedback to the AVP. I feel like you oh, guys no. would. No. I mean, yes, but they don't. They don't want it. Actually, right. I had a, I had a dinner with it. Josh, who who is the AVP, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> the other the day, AVP. and yeah, pretty much asked some questions about volleyball and business the whole time. I felt really bad. Mm. <laughs> he answered them, but yeah, 
basically like the conclusion of the conversation <laughs> is he's like yes i've thought of all of this like have you ever thought of why don't you guys do this yeah. he's like yes we've thought of it <laughs> yeah. it's not as easy as everyone makes it sound right yeah. Which is true. Yeah, because like even having an FIVB in California would be huge. Oh, it'd be massive. Like they should get on that if anyone's. They listening. already did it. Well, they did one in Huntington where we're gonna play. Okay. In 2017. 17. Yeah. 18. See how cool 18. I get stats. 2018. It's there like an go. Alexa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> if it's volleyball, yeah. I just go, it's like Travis. When was? And, and that boom. tournament was so cool because it was a. I, I want to say it was a 48 team double elimination. Hmm. Massive. Okay. And there were 16 yeah. um, American Brower spots Mullen? in the main draw. Brower Mewson won? Brower Mewson right. won. Yeah. Okay. And, and I want to say Mel and Pav won the women. Mm -hmm. It was huge. Yeah. But it had to have been such a logistical nightmare to figure out between AVP, FIVB, USA yeah. Volleyball. Rights, USA USA. Volleyball is trying to run. Totally. But just imagine how cool it would be. Like It'd be Inc awesome. Yeah, good location. Best fans in the world. Really. Bring it For to sure. Manhattan Beach. Put two events in the same spot. Yeah. Like, far apart, hopefully. Yeah. <sighs> See if the same draw comes. Like, if these people love volleyball that much, they're going to come and watch when the best players in the world come. Mm -hmm. Right? Because if you think about it, like, if... If Volleyball World did, like, say we brought back the Beach Major Series. Mm. I mean, you do it in, like, Stad, Hamburg, Manhattan Beach. Yeah. And I don't know what will be, bring back, like, a Vienna or a Klagenfurt. Right. I've heard stories yeah. about Klagenfurt yeah. from Jay. Apparently, oh, yeah. it was pretty fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was there Can't a confirm. few times with, with Jay. <laughs> I can confirm. Nice. <laughs> Par yeah. Castle parties. I feel like Player's you tent was on the lake. Oh, okay. Literally oh. floating. And then there was a Red Bull boat Pretty that would pick bougie. you up and take you out wake surfing if you wanted. Oh, yeah. yeah just bougie. in between You matches. walk in from the dock, from the player's tent that was floating, and there's like filet mignon and chocolate lava cakes and like seared salmons. And, and we wonder why. Man, these are dark times. Oh, <laughs> these are dark times. Oh, it was <laughs> insane. Yeah, it was insane. The player's Definitely. tent alone was probably 300 grand for the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, crazy. they had crazy VIP packages and then parties after. And so, is that your favorite event of all time? Like of all time? That is my favorite event of all time. Yeah, if we're just talking about, I mean, even the, even playing, it was insane. Mm. Like the fans were, were packed. They, it was like Woodstock, like the, that old uh, really that old concert. People are camping out. I didn't even know that. Like I just figured the fans came. One night I like went the wrong way or something and I just saw fans and it was raining and they're just like in the mud, just all camping in this massive field mm. and just waiting to get in the next day. Yeah. And they're watching, That's dancing energy. and getting shot with fire hoses. Yeah. It was nuts. See, I feel like it would be cool to bring that back, but then you just can't recreate it. Like it was at that, had to be at that specific time. Yeah. Like, they created a culture around it. Hannes started it. The promoter started it from like a pretty small thing. And like mm. people were like, oh, this is a sick weekend. And then it just grew into this massive thing. And he got Red Bull on board and mm. had millions of dollars to spend. Yeah. I don't think he made them back ever, yeah. but, yeah. but he spent it. I don't think Red Bull saw that and money again. And he did it in a beautiful way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. cool. And Stavanger had the coolest trophy, the sword. Stavanger was cool. A sword? That's cool. And every single event, maybe not like the China events, mm. had an after party. Yeah, see, I can't. Where you're just like, I lost. Ah, okay, I'm over okay, it. Let's party. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm just, I've, I've never played in China. And yeah, from, from the Kiwi players who have like played a lot of Asian tour events, they are not excited to be going back to China. So yeah, the food's mess. just so different there. Yeah. Uh, Everything, the it's language hard. barrier. It, if you're in the wrong city. where What city in China is um, Asian Champs, do you know? That's, it's, a, it's that's going to be a tough one for me to, for I me could, to I've know. I've been to probably 10 Chinese cities and I could name three. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I do know, but it's remember. just, I'm, again, I'm not the admin girl, so I know that I'm <laughs> flying into Shanghai. I okay. know where I need to be. And there then, you go. Yeah. Shanghai and then taking a flight from Bullet there? train, I think, oh, from somewhere okay. to somewhere. My first FIVB was in um, Kinzhou. 
China. Was I cool. there? Cool. Or a different you, year? You were not. I know I've been You were there. still sick, I think. Oh, gotcha. Or maybe you maybe you weren't. Kinjo, I know I've been You there, came right? back the next year and you won uh, Gold with Trev. That was your first international event Kinjo? back. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. See, I know his, I know his BBB better <laughs> Dude, than Dude, yeah. He's my volleyball Alexa. <laughs> I have to ask you, so you are a volleyball nerd. Who is your favorite player you can't pick an American player? Like favorite player, like to watch. Yeah, or in general. Or to play with. No, like has to be not American. Like has to be like a current or past. Well, I feel like I can't even. I'm not even allowed to pick Anders because he's, he's everyone's everyone's yeah. favorite. I've, lately, I've been uh, really enjoying watching Perisic and Schweiner, especially Schweiner because he's not like physically remarkable. He's like yeah. a pretty normal physical yeah. dude who is just so good. He gets so served good. every single ball. Mentally strong. Yeah. Yeah. And he just runs that same little medium out of the middle or just runs a little back set and yeah. just kind of carves away. Yeah. Gets his blocks. And then Perisic gets like three balls a match and puts all of them away. Yeah. I love watching them. Nice. Mm. Yeah. And then Sweden. Oh, yeah. Sweden's cool. Yeah. Sweden. Yeah. For, like, I just watch that because I enjoy watching things I can't do. And yeah. I cannot do things that david amon's doing no for sure <laughs> for sure uh yeah i feel like that's been the craziest thing like starting to play against like way like really good teams is just like everyone can bang a ball like everyone's at that level but then just like the people who are so or like people who are winning are just so mentally strong mm. like it's literally crazy like the consistency yeah, yeah. you know i think teams 100%. on the men's side i think you have anders is physically different and then teams like two through 30 i think the difference is just a small mental percentage point yeah and that's it physically i think everyone's basically the same like everyone can hit if you hit 10 high lines you're gonna right. hit nine in the cones mm -hmm. yeah for sure but it's just that mental difference i think is the is that's that little mm -hmm. i was talking to sam this morning at practice that i think the difference between team 35 and team two is team two probably wins six more points throughout the year so crazy that's, like, eh? that's the difference yeah. I mean, you talk about that all the time yeah if you could get like five points yeah give just me five to points to spread out sprinkle. throughout the season i can put them anywhere nice i could probably like change the trajectory of my whole season that's usually. wild just by like you win that match and then mm -hmm. this one and now you have a medal there and yeah you've made it further here and then yeah. you got the points to get into that and like your whole season could have changed mm -hmm. kind of i thing. think about taylor crab about that all the time mm -hmm. because in a span of like three weeks, Taylor had a swing in the semifinals to beat Anders and Christian in Stad. Christian makes a crazy dig. Don't listen to this, Gets Taylor. it up. <laughs> they end up losing 16-14 the third. A yep. couple weeks later, Taylor has a swing to win Manhattan. the Manhattan Beach Open. Ooh. Misses it by like this And much. he would have gotten the pier before me and Trevor. Yep. Ooh. Phil and Nick end up coming back, winning that second set, winning in three. Mm. and you think timing is everything two the points timing was not he had a Taylor's perfect swing too changed. he went high corner yeah. like safe yeah and he's confident and it just was like an inch out it's the right yeah. swing it's yeah. the right decision sometimes it's just like that though that's yep. that's crazy yeah yeah but i feel like that's gonna be interesting this year to see like the teams who can just get it done yeah. like that like every point's important yeah that's why i love watching like all like Anders and Christian, I've been fascinated watching them the last couple of years because they get everyone's best. Yeah, oh, everyone wants be, to beat them. Yeah, it, will, it would be crazy being like that team that everyone wants to beat and having yeah. that target for sure. That's like all they know. For seventy five percent of their career, yeah. professionally, they've been like number one, mm. it, or at least like known as number one, right? Yeah. yeah. Probably fifty percent of their career, they've been like literally the number one <laughs> ranked team. Are they nice the guys? Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> we we hate to love them. Yeah, <laughs> they're like the nicest guys. Nice. Yeah. 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 Well, Alice, well, they're a double whammy. Yeah. It's been awesome having you on. Was <sighs> this as, as nerve wracking as you thought it yes, would be? Yes, absolutely. But it was good. It was good. I feel like fifty percent of what I said was actually like coherent so i enjoyed it hey, that's pretty yeah. good better than a lot of people on yeah. the show thank better you than guys me. yeah <laughs> well we you guys are so... you have the best accent thank you yeah that's true the best kiwi to come on best kiwi to come Ooh, on sorry jay and, yeah. and the tallest Tight. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> 
just grilling you guys are the best again. thank you thank you so much for having me like i feel very underqualified to be here but thank you well, where can our listeners follow along where can they follow Alice's oh my journey? gosh not, not elise <laughs> yeah hopefully check us out on in the main drawers of some events ah, there you go yeah and instagram instagram just my name alice just zeman me. two yeah. ends or our team our team page yeah okay yeah. oh you got a team page <laughs> we do ah, yeah there we go yeah you're official yeah we're official <laughs> yeah sweet thanks yeah. alice always good catching up with yeah, you yeah thanks guys thanks for coming on yeah shoots shoots <laughs>